range script loaded, you can now press, escape, select choose slot and pick your aircraft. The Pucara can carry rocket pods mounted on its wing pylons, up to three pods on each. It cannot mount rockets on its ventral pylon. The rocket types provided are Zuni MK-71 of 127mm, on LAU-10 pods with four rockets each. High Explosive Fragmentation Warhead Hydra M-151, of 2.75 inches, on LAU-68 pods with seven rockets each, or LAU-61 with 19 rockets each with high explosive warhead Hydra MK5 of 2.75 inches with high explosive anti-tank warhead on LAU 68 or 61 pods Hydra M156 smoke marker rockets Hydra M257 illumination rockets with parachutes for this training mission we will practice the use of two different rocket types on the right wing we carry 8 Zuni MK-71 rockets, while on the left wing we carry 21 of the smaller M-151 rockets. We will use a weapons range that uses objects created by the 476th Virtual Fighter Group, and a weapons range script developed by the user Suribob, that will allow you to gauge your accuracy and monitor your progress. On this mission, you will have to fire your rockets onto the target circle located on the southern side of the range. Perform at least two passes over the target, one for each rocket type. Perform the passes on a west-to-east general direction, so that the mission logic can keep track of them. You can make as many passes as you want, while you still have rockets left. You can access the attack statistics at any time, by calling up the F10 option of the communications menu. Your aircraft is ready to start the flight, increase throttle and let the aircraft slowly move forward. Once the aircraft is moving, press the wheel brakes to confirm their operation. Release the wheel brakes and resume the taxi. Be careful of other traffic that may be near you. Good, now turn right and proceed along the taxiway, towards the runway. Stop just short of the runway and then check that there is no air traffic about to land or take off. Unfortunately, the Pucara can't make use of the ATC on DCS. If there is no traffic, enter the runway, align on its center and stop there. We are now ready to take off, let's do a short checklist. 3. Wheel brakes. Keep the brakes applied until you have finished all checks. 4. Canopy. Check that it's locked, its enunciator should be off. 5. Flaps. On the real aircraft, the takeoff flaps is 12 degrees but the simulator currently can have the flaps only full up or full down. Because of this, we will have the flaps on full down instead. Check that they are in fact fully extended. 6. Pitch trim. Confirm it is set to 0 degrees, as per the real aircraft. 7. Temperature gauges. 
Check they are within their normal green range. 8. Pressure gauges. Check that they also are within their normal range. Once the pre-takeoff check are completed, we will begin the takeoff run. 1. Propeller pitch. Increase the pitch lever to its full forward position, for maximum power. 2. Release the wheel brakes. The aircraft will begin its run. 3. Maintain the aircraft aligned with the runway, using the rudder. 4. Once the speed reaches 90 knots, pull smoothly the stick back to rotate. 5. Use pitch trim to set the aircraft on the 10 degree ADI climb line. 5. Retract the landing gear. Don't exceed 150 knots with the gear down. 6. Retract the flaps. Don't exceed 140 knots with the flaps extended. 7. Adjust the pitch trim to set the aircraft on the 10 degree ADI climb line. 255 degrees to reach our first waypoint, just over the bridge at the town of Gur, Yak, ahead of us. You are over waypoint 1. Now, turn left towards Lago Bismarck, which is our waypoint 2, on a heading of 185 degrees. Maintain 250 knots and ascend to arrive at the next waypoint at 5,000 feet altitude.
The procedure for using the rockets is as follows. 1. Master arm safety switch. Set to its right position, with a right click, a green light above it illuminates. 2. Sight power. On. Right click the INT switch to its up position, to activate the weapon sight. 3. Sight depression. Set. We don't have access to the rocket tables of the real aircraft, so you will have to practice a bit to find a value that goes well with your shooting style. We suggest a value of minus 10, using a 25 to 30 degrees dive and a speed of 200 knots. Four, weapon selector knob. Select the rocket's position. Five, station select. Select which pylon stations you want to enable. For this mission, let's start with the Zuni rockets first, so enable only the right station switch, to its up position. This version of the Pukara is not equipped with a weapons programmer, so it can't fire the rockets in ripples. Instead, each press of the flight stick's weapon release button fires a single rocket from each pylon. You must release and press repeatedly if you want to fire more. We have reached waypoint 2. Turn left to enter the weapons range on a easterly head. The rocket target circle is at the southern side of the range, enclosed on a square. Don't confuse it with the bombing circle, which is pointed by a long arrow. Begin an attack dive, keeping the targeting reticle centered over the rocket target. Wait until the side center dot is over the target, then press the stick's weapon release button to fire rockets. Each press fires a single rocket. Pull back on the stick to exit the dive and climb back up. Increase throttle. First pass. Turn right 180 degrees towards a westerly heading, climb, and perform another pass. Start climbing back to at least 3000 feet, before attempting another pass. If you are out of Zuni rockets, Turn off the right pylon and turn on the left one.
second pass. Turn back 180 degrees towards a west heading, to perform another pass. If you fired all your rockets, then return to base on a heading of 045 degrees. The heading towards Rio Gallegos Air Base is approximately 045 degrees. You can check your range results by calling up the communications menu. Select F10, Other. Then select F2, Range. Finally, click F3, My Bombing Results. Deactivate the armament with this procedure. 1. Master arm safety switch. Set to its left position. The green light goes out. 2. Gun sight power. Set to off. Left click the ANT switch to its down position to deactivate the gun sight. 3. Weapon selector knob. Turn to the no position where no weapon is selected. On real conditions, we would return to base with our empty rocket pods still attached, so that they can be reused later. But as this is a training flight, we will now learn how to jettison them on an emergency. 1. Select weapon stations. The highlighted switch, selector, allows you to select. Alas! Both wing stations are selected for jettison. Centro. Only the ventral station is selected. Totus. All three stations are selected. For this exercise, select Alas. 2. Right-click on the highlighted cover, to lift it and reveal the jettison button. 3. Right-click again, on the uncovered jettison button. You should hear the sound of the explosive charges that are used for the jettisoning. Press F2, to go into external view to confirm that the jettison was successful. Press F1 to return to cockpit view. 4. Left-click, twice, on the cover to close it. You have completed the rocket practice at the range. Please select. Press spacebar if you want to continue. Practice the navigation back to the base, and land there. Press backspace if you prefer to end the mission now. Tune the VOR receiver to the Rio Gallegos VOR frequency, of 116.7 MHz. Use the highlighted double concentric knob, to select the frequency value. Next, enable the VOR navigation, by setting the highlighted VOR switch to ON. Good, now on the RMI gauge, the double needle is active and pointing towards the VOR station of our destination airbase. The runway at our airbase has a heading of 255 degrees, so turn the highlighted knob using the mouse wheel, until it is pointing at that heading. Be aware that the knob does not allow to turn from 0 to 359 degrees, so you have to turn the mouse wheel the other way around. Press spacebar once the single needle is pointing to 255 degrees. Keep your current heading of 045 degrees, until both needles of the RMI begin to superimpose each other, at which point you will turn left, towards the destination airbase. Unfortunately, the Pucara and DCS can't communicate with the DC, so you must use the F-10 map to be aware of other air traffic that may be flying near Rio Gallegos. Press spacebar once you have checked the F-10 map.
the two needles on the RMI gauge should be starting to superimpose each other. Just before the needles merge, turn the aircraft left, towards the airbase, until both needles point to the top of the RMI, its 12 o'clock position. Good, now our aircraft is pointing towards the destination airbase, the course should be around 255 degrees. Perform a descent towards the airbase. Reduce speed, by pulling the propeller pitch lever back, to reduce power. As the speed reduces, you will need to retrim the aircraft. Activate the landing lights, with a right click on the highlighted switch. The Pucara doesn't have speed brakes, so once you reach less than 200 knots, extend the landing gear and its drag will help you reduce speed. At 140 knots, extend the flaps. This will further reduce speed. Retrim the aircraft to keep level attitude. The increased drag of the flaps will force you to add power with the propeller pitch lever. Try to keep a speed of 120 knots through the remainder of the descent. We are at finals now. Reduce speed to 115 knots and use pitch trim to keep the nose level. Just before touchdown, reduce the speed further to 100 knots, and lift the nose a bit to touch down on the main gear and not the nose wheel. Touch down. Use the rudder to keep the aircraft aligned with the runway. Wait until the nose wheel comes down, before applying wheel brakes. Press spacebar if you'd like to taxi to the ramp. Press backspace, if you prefer to end the mission now. This is Street B. Proceed forward and then slightly left, to enter the airport ramp. You are now at the ramp. Park at any spot within the left side of the ramp, but park the aircraft with a U-turn, so that it ends up facing the airport terminal. Good, you have parked your aircraft. The aircraft shutdown is optional, please select. Press spacebar, if you want to practice the shutdown procedure. Press backspace, to end the training now. 
Congratulations, you have learned and practiced the rocket attack procedure on the Pukara, landed back, and taxied to the flight ramp at our home base. The mission has been successfully completed. Press spacebar to exit.